In this video, I'm going to be going over what laptop you should get for getting into data science. I'm going to be going over four different laptop types and the pros and cons of each of them. I'm going to be going over generally what you would expect to be able to do on a laptop, the kind of limitations of one, and how to make your hardware go further uh, regardless of what kind of hardware that you actually have available. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Okay, so first up, what can you generally expect to do on a laptop? Now, for myself personally, I'm quite often working with data sets between five to 10 million records of data. Now, for some of you, that may seem really, really big, and for others of you, that may seem really, really small. In any case, that amount of data, I find, is probably a good amount that, uh, you know, it's probably enough to be able to take a sample of a bigger data set and still have enough capacity to work with while still being reasonably fast. Now, once you start getting into bigger data, bigger workloads, <clears throat> If you're trying to work with all of the data at the same time, it can slow de things down a bit. Um, and so generally what you want to be doing is testing your models on smaller data sets, making sure that everything works, um, and then popping it off over onto some sort of server, clustered computing, some sort of computer with more resource uh, to be able to run those things faster rather than trying to necessarily run that on a laptop. But anyway, what do you need in order to process about five to 10 million records of data? So I personally have an Ultrabook. Now, this thing here has basically got an i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 SSD hard drive. Now, I'll talk about why those three things are kind of important. Now, first of all, the CPU is an i7 CPU, which is a 64-bit CPU. And personally, I think that having a 64-bit CPU is really important because when you are working in data science, you're crunching a lot of large numbers. Large integers and doubles are all stored within 64 bits. Now, if you go to a less powerful, cheaper machine, like some sort of netbook, which is using some mobile processor running on a 32-bit system, basically what happens is that all the numbers, these large 64-bit numbers, have to get chopped in two to be processed by a 32-bit processor, which means it's taking at least twice as long and twice as many processes in order to, to crunch this data. So you have a significant slowdown once you're moving to 32-bit processors. Now, the, <clears throat> the other thing about the i7, because you also have i3s and i5s, they're all 64-bit chips. The i7s also have more cache and they also have, and basically the cache is the fast memory within the CPU. So that's how much data it can hold close to the, uh, close to the processor, uh, much, much faster than RAM, which we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, and the other thing is, is that it has more cores. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that <clears throat> by default, data science applications like R and Python are not multi-threaded by default. They, by default, they run off single core. So even if you get a faster CPU, a lot of times you're not taking advantage of that unless you're also using libraries within those systems that take advantage of multiple cores. So for example, in R and Python, um, the default data frames, so either the default R data frame or Pandas for Python, are actually relatively slow data frames, uh, quite a bit slow uh, than some of the libraries like R dot data table. Um, sorry, R data dot table. So this is a library which is actually available for both R and Python. And it actually is, the underlying implementation is built in C and it will use all of the cores that you have available. So because of this, it runs many, many, many times faster than the built-in data frames. So something to definitely keep in mind there. Now, um, moving on. The amount of RAM 
is going to determine how much data that you can actually process on that computer. So as mentioned, I use 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is a pretty standard amount of RAM. You can get, you can get more, but 16, gigabyte, uh, 16 gigabytes is a kind of standard amount that you get on a kind of high-ish end laptop. Now, so if you had maybe 32 gigs of RAM, maybe you could process 10 to 20 million records or whatever it is. But like I said before, in a lot of situations, you can still probably take a sample of your data to work on your laptop rather than trying to have to do too much on your laptop anyway. So something to keep in mind there. Now, um, also with memory, I find that a lot of the times people end up sort of um, using a lot more memory than they need to, uh, basically because they make lots and lots and lots and lots of different copies of the data frames. And so <clears throat> um, maybe you're only getting 1 million records of data instead of 10 million records of data uh, because you have 10 different copies of it because every single stage of your application saves another copy of your data. So, <clears throat> um, so it's uh, other things to keep in mind that will enable you to do more uh, with less is uh, just managing how you actually use the memory uh, because you can use it very inefficiently as well. Things like graphics, visualizations, all that kind of stuff like that, again, is going to take up a lot of that memory. So things to keep in mind there. Um, now, in terms of hard drive, I would definitely be going for something which contains an SSD. SSDs is short for solid state drive. These are memory-based hard drives instead of disk-based hard drives. Now, these are many, many times faster. I think around about like 40 times faster or so. Um, and when it comes to reading and writing the data off disk, these are significantly faster and so will make a big difference to how fast everything else runs as well. Okay. Now, as mentioned, I personally use an Ultrabook. Now, the thing was with an Ultrabook, the kind of one thing that you might think is missing is something like a GPU. So another type of laptop that some data scientists use is um, sometimes something like a gaming laptop. Um, because gaming laptops are generally the only laptop that you can kind of get which also contain uh, GPUs. So GPUs are graphics processing units. Now, if you are going for something with a GPU, then you definitely want to get something with an NVIDIA graphics card as opposed to some other make because <clears throat> the algorithms that do support GPUs are all optimized for NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, do you actually even need a graphics card or not? Will it actually make your particular kind of algorithms any faster? In a lot of instances, no. Just as with R and Python, our single core by default, um, a lot of the algorithms that are available don't have any option for GPU acceleration. So GPU acceleration is most notably used for deep learning type of applications. Now, I personally don't really use any deep learning um, applications because it's generally better for things like computer vision, uh, natural language processing, and these type of things. Now, in, for the type of data that I work with, I'm working with uh, basically a lot of structured data, uh, big data frames. And so for the type of work that I do, I generally don't benefit from actually having a GPU. Now, the other thing is this. If you get a computer with a GPU, you are paying a lot more for it. Uh, the computer is going to be a lot bigger and chunkier. Um, usually like say twice as thick as something as an Ultrabook and um, they're generally gaming laptops so maybe not something you necessarily want to bring along to a client meeting or something like that but just something to keep in mind. Now um, the other type of laptop that uh, a lot of data scientists use sometimes is sometimes they use Macs. So Mac or PC which one should you go for? Now as you've seen, I use a PC for the type of work I, I do. There's a lot of great data scientists which also use Macs as well. But the reason why uh, a PC can be particularly useful for you is basically if you are doing data science for business, if you're in enterprise, 
then a, a lot of the enterprise applications, or pretty much all the enterprise applications, especially the legacy ones, are all PC-based. So your financial applications, your trading applications, your trading platforms, those kind of things, they're all PC-based applications. Now, more and more, there a lot of the applications being built are more web-based, uh, so they'll be cross-platform. But pretty much all the legacy applications and still a lot of the applications being built today are still PC-based applications. So something to keep in mind there. Um, most notably of all the kind of applications is Microsoft Excel. Now you might be thinking, well, Mac also has Microsoft Excel, but it's actually a very, very different and very cut down version of Excel compared to the version on PC. Now, when you are working with data and data science, you are gonna be starting to use larger data sets. And when you do get into things like R and Python, you realize the importance of having a reproducible process. Now, with the Windows version of Microsoft Excel, you have tools such as Power Query and Power Pivot, which don't exist in any of the other versions of Excel, including Mac or Office Online and those kind of things. Why are those important? Power Query enables you to create a reproducible process, and Power Pivot enables you to have an in-memory column stored data frame in the back end of Excel which means you can process data much faster and you can basically share much larger amounts of data with your clients, uh, which is not normally possible with the normal versions of Excel. So, <clears throat> um, so something to keep in mind there. Now, finally, uh, another thing that I've seen people use sometimes is a netbook. Now, as mentioned previously, netbooks use 32-bit CPUs. They're generally massively underpowered. So the machine itself is not suitable for data science. So how are certain data scientists getting around this? Certain data scientists, what they're doing is they are taking these netbooks and they are actually using a remote computer such as AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Microsoft Azure or something like that, or even their own sort of personal setup cluster. And they're installing servers on these computers and they are running their processes remotely using a netbook just as a terminal. So I've done some of this kind of stuff myself as well. I've set up my own R servers on AWS. And that's kind of cool because effectively you can get an RStudio IDE uh, that you can use anywhere that you can get a web browser, including your mobile phone, right? So you can go around with your mobile phone, do all your R programming on it, which is really pretty cool. But <laughs> there's a few things that you should keep in mind here. Um, is this actually a good idea or not? So if you are actually working in Teams and you're collaborating, um, or you have a lot of data kind of stored remotely, then setting up a remote server can be quite a good idea. And the reason for this is because everybody on your team can be using the exact same version of R with the exact same libraries installed. Um, so you're all working on the same environment. And this makes a, a really big difference when you're working on the team. It makes things a lot easier. Um, easier in some respects, and I'll go over this a little bit more in a sec. Now, also, if you have a lot of data, right? Say you have, I don't know, terabytes of data uh, and you don't want to download that, you don't want to take that off of the server, then having a remote server means that you can leave the processing next to where the data is instead of pulling the data down to where your computer is to be able to process it. And um, this can make, <clears throat> this can make a, a, a big difference because downloading data can take a very long time if you need to do it quite frequently. Again, if you're working on a laptop, really you only want to be downloading a kind of smaller sample of that data and be doing the larger processing off on some kind of remote computer anyway. But generally speaking, I don't like this uh, setup so much. If you are kind of more experimenting, if you want to explore like new libraries and applications, then it's much harder to get all of these things set up on a remote machine. 
Experimentation, which is a lot of times of what you want to do, uh, is what you want to do while you're learning. Um, you really want to be doing it on a local machine because it's so much faster and easier to do that. You're not really going to be working with the bigger data sets anyway, um, but you do want to be installing libraries, installing different applications, um, testing out different versions, and that's just much, much harder to do on a server. So um, just something to keep in mind there. Anyway, I hope this helps. You decide for yourself like what kind of laptop that you should get as a, as a data science, getting into data science, even working on data science in a team. Yeah, hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.